Well, welcome to the last part of Thinking Thoroughly Through Scripture. This week we're talking about meditating and memorizing God's Word, and we're saying as a, as a bottom line today, when God's Word abides in us, His life is formed in us. We don't want to simply be knowers of the Word, we want to be doers of the Word. When we hide God's Word in our hearts and, and in our minds, then we have placed something living and active at work within us. That's powerful, and it will have an impact. Man, I think that when we memorize God's Word and we meditate on it and we think over and over on it, we are putting God's Word in us, and we are giving the Holy Spirit added tools to put to work within us, to shape us into the likeness and character of Christ, into the kinds of people that he created us to be, and the kind of people who can do the sorts of things that he's prepared in advance for you and me to do. So this is vital. I feel like we have missed this in our culture that is, we don't do this kind of thing. Uh, We are quickly distracted or on to the next new thing, right? The latest thing, you know, so we need a new verse of the day every day. We want a new passage of scripture every time we open the Bible. We want something, a new word from the pastor, right? We want something fresh and new each day. Well, God's word is fresh and new each day, for he is fresh and new each day, and he is alive and active. And the best thing we can do is take these rich passages of scripture that have been recorded for us down through the ages and hold a wealth of knowledge and truth, and we hide that in our hearts and trust the Holy Spirit to change us in incredible and life-giving ways into the kind of people who can not only live like Jesus, but love like Jesus and desire to do so from the very depths of our being. And it all starts with hiding God's word in our hearts. And in this passage that we're reading today, we see a guy named Joshua. His predecessor was Moses, who brought the people out of Egypt you know, and out of slavery. And through Moses, God gave his law to the people. of, Here's my word to you, Israel. Here's what I need you to do to live according to my ways. And then when Moses' time was up, Joshua was then tasked with leading God's people into the promised land that he had given to them. And in this passage today, we see what God spoke into the life of Joshua. Be strong and courageous. I am going with you. Be strong and courageous, Joshua. Lead your people. I mean, you can only imagine how nerve-wracking It would have to be to stand at the bank of the Jordan and look over into that promised land and say, okay, today is the day. Today is the day we've been waiting for all of our life. Are we ready for this? Do we have the experience or the battle expertise for what we're about to face over there? Uh, Our ancestors dreamed of this moment, and here we are, and it's up to us. Be strong and courageous. And we love those verses. And you'll see them, you know, in Christian artwork all the time. Every Christian book for men (laughs) talks about Joshua and be strong and courageous. It's a very manly thing that we like. We Christian men like to think about and talk about, you know, you go into the average church bathroom, I promise you there's a be strong and courageous on the wall somewhere in the men's restroom. (laughs) What was interesting to me this time as I read through it, and saw, oh, I can't detach God's command to be strong and courageous from his command to remember his law, his word, to meditate on it day and night. It's attached as a requirement if we want to experience the promises associated with going with the Lord and strength and courage that the Lord supplies. And you look at these verses, verses 7 and 8. I mean, he says, look, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. (laughs) I, uh, I told you last week about this literal word app that I use, and you can actually touch that word meditate, and it pulls up the Hebrew word for it and some of the different ways it can be translated and used. And it gives you a a broader understanding of how this 
different connotations of this word, right? So things like to utter, to speak, to meditate, muse, imagine. But it does carry this idea of uttering or muttering as well. And you can see, like you, I can imagine, um, you know, Joshua and other devoted followers of Yahweh as they prepared to go into battle, reciting, muttering. I've got to remember God's word. I've got to remember God's law. I've got to remember his promises to me. I've got to make sure we do this right. I want to honor him. I want to live his way. I want to go with him. If we don't go with him, we've got nothing. We won't be fruitful. We won't make it. Uh, you know, I've got to cling to this word. I've got to cling to this word. And sometimes, and I think in our culture today, we don't have that same hunger and uh, just need for holding on to God's word so tightly. Uh, maybe a part of it is our we are so enamored with the new and the latest. Like it's got to be fresh. It's got to be new. We have a short attention span for repetitive stuff. Like we don't uh, repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Like what is the point of that? Give me something fresh. Give me something new. Give me a new thought today that strikes me as wow. I haven't thought of that ever or in a long time needed to hear that today. You know, we like that new thing. So we like the sound bites. We like drive-by scripture, right? Where we read the verse of the day, or we read that chapter today, and we read the next chapter the next day, and on to the next thing, and on to the next thing. This challenge is to take the thing, you know, the main thing, those rich passages of scripture that contain so much of God's truth, and, and to live in that, to rest in that, to repeat it and recite it, to utter it, to mutter it, to work it over and over repetitively, and, and to think about it, and to engage our imaginations, and to think about what does this mean? What does this mean for me? It's just really living with God's Word, hiding it in our hearts, working it out, letting it abide within us. And this is how God's Word comes alive within us and does work within us and forms us into the people he would have us to be. So, yes, we need good study habits. We need to understand what we're meditating on, right? But we also need to do the work of putting it in our hearts. Now I know, memorizing and meditating aren't going to win any popularity awards in our culture. I don't think I've met anyone who got really excited about memorizing anything. <laughs> And I've met quite a few people who think this whole idea of meditating sounds like, you know, something new agey or something from some foreign religion, um, you know, and not recognizing the rich tradition in our own household of faith, reaching back, you know, through our lineage to Jesus and beyond, right? Uh, even into the Old Testament with guys like Joshua. So uh, it's, these aren't things that we're comfortable with. I get that. And it would be easy for us to say, sorry, this is just, this is not my thing. My hope for you as you engage with this topic as a group and talk about what this could look like, practically speaking for you, would be that you would approach this conversation with a can-do attitude. Be cautious of saying things like, well, I, this is just not for me. Or, I've tried and I can't do it. Uh, those kinds of things are not only uh, you putting up the white flag on something that could end up being a really rich and valuable thing in your life if you figured out a way that would work for you, but it also might end up discouraging someone else. And so uh, I would just encourage you, think, how can we do this? And talk as a group in a positive way about, hey, let's, let's dig into this. Let's figure out, you know. Uh, you know, what's been your struggle? Okay, well, this has been my struggle. Okay, well, what can we do about it? You know, and coming at it with that mentality of, like, we can, we can work on this. We can work on this together. We can get better at this. One thing I would mention to you that maybe would help, sometimes people get so hung up on the memorizing part of this. And they say, you know, my brain doesn't work that way, or it used to work that way, and it doesn't anymore <laughs> as I've gotten older. And uh, so maybe if, if the word memorizing is a hang up for you, just set that word aside and replace it with the word repetition or recitation. Let's just talk about 
God's word over and over in our lives. Maybe it is a Psalm 23 or a Lord's Prayer that we looked at recently in the Abiding Alone with God series. One of those rich passages, so good and so easy to think on and meditate on and pray through and just repeat them over and over again. If memorizing it seems too intimidating, then just pull it out day and night and work your way through it. Repeat it, utter it, mutter it as the Hebrew word for meditate in that passage in Joshua said, let it rest on your lips and in your mind and in your heart each day and night. And as you do, watch and see as what the Lord would have you to be comes to life in you as his truth gets stored in your heart and in your soul and in your mind and comes to life in you. This is my prayer for you, so enjoy discussing.